Um, all right. Uh, welcome everyone to Beta NYC's uh, New York City Open Data Community Hour, uh, the first of potentially a series. Um, it's November 18th, 6 p.m., and we are recording. Um, so today uh, we're joined by Zachary Fader from the Open Data Program at the New York City Mayor's um, Office of Data Analytics. Um, we're really excited because we've worked really closely with uh, Zachary and the team over there for a while. Um, Beta NYC is a big advocate of open data. We'll be telling you a quick intro uh, to our sort of history in advocating for open data and uh, using it and helping others use it. Um, so hello and welcome. Um, Zachary, if you just want to, well, well, you're going to be also saying some things. Um, so quickly, our agenda. Um, we're gonna be uh, doing an icebreaker in a few moments. Um, Noel's gonna say hello from Beta NYC. Zachary's gonna say hello from Moda, uh, Mayor's Office of Data Analytics. Uh, then we're going to go through questions uh, that we've received in advance. Um, so when people registered, we uh, had an option for you to submit a question and we received a bunch. So we'll be answering those questions. And then um, we're gonna have a live Q&A. So at the moment of live Q&A, you're all invited to uh, come off your camera, like turn on your cameras and engage with us, say hi. Um, and where are you going to be putting your questions? You're gonna be putting your questions in this link on the uh, lower right hand of our screen, uh, slide, slide .do, slido, uh, slash ask open data. Uh, when you go to that site, you'll be able to see um, a space, and I think it's just like a, a blank box and you can submit a question. You can also um, look at other questions that have been submitted and thumb them up if you um, really want that question to be answered. So take a look um, and uh, see, let us know what questions you want to be answered. Um, at the very end um, of the event, we're gonna invite you to a virtual networking um, session. Uh, that's just essentially us hanging out in one of these virtual uh, networking space apps and uh, we'll just be saying hello in a much more casual way. So um, like we said, please mute when people are presenting. Um, say hi in the chat, introduce yourselves, uh, let us know where you're coming from. Um, if you are comfortable with your video on, video on is great. Um, we are recording. Um, so to kick off, um, we thought it'd be fun to break out into small groups of four and um, say hello to each other so we can uh, get to know who else is in the room. Um, so I'm going to have us break out and uh, the three questions that I would love for everyone to answer are, uh, who are you? Um, what's your name? Where are you coming from? Uh, where are you based? Uh, why are you here? Um, what's your interest in uh, open data? And uh, do you have a lot of questions or are you just curious? Um, and if you have a favorite New York City open data set, uh, let it, let tell tell your group what it is, um, or let us know what uh, data set you would like to access or see on the open data portal. So um, let me now get us into breakout rooms. Um, everybody has. Uh, everybody now has the ability to unmute themselves. So hopefully when you go into the breakout room function, uh, you will be able to unmute yourself and introduce yourself to the other participants. Cool. Um, so it is 6.10 now. We'll take about seven minutes to uh, for these rooms um, and I'll give you a one minute warning. Um, so, all right. And we're gonna break out. I'm gonna
Whew. For a second there, I thought I was in the wrong meeting. What's up, Noel? Hello. Hello. It worked. And Kate, you're muted if you were talking. Good. Uh, <laughs> um, all right, uh, hope that was fun for everyone. Um, I'm just checking that, uh, okay, good. The recording's still going. Um, we had a few people uh, with technical issues, but um, it was fun to hear that uh, what people's favorite data sets were. Um, welcome back. Um, now I'm gonna hand the floor over, over to Noel um, and he'll introduce himself, Noel or Noel, and uh, give you some brief background on Beta NYC. Uh, great, um, so I just say next slide and you advance it. Um, so hopefully um, most of you are already a member of Beta NYC's uh, meetup or uh, subscribe to our newsletter. Uh, for those of you who don't know Beta NYC, we're a civic organization improving the lives of New Yorkers through technology, data, and design. Um, our whole focus has been to really think through, um, uh, well, we started off as a meetup um, and we realized that there was an opportunity to make some uh, critical improvements in New York City's infrastructure by helping get this little piece of legislation passed called the city's open data law, uh, which is one of the reasons why we're all here this evening. Um, and through that, what we've realized is that our um, goal and mission is to not only help the city, but also help our neighbors uh, achieve digital literacy and ensure that the city produces as much data as possible in a safely manner. So that way we have that transparency and we can work together to ensure a proper functioning democracy for the 21st century. Uh, next slide. And we do this through three specific ways. So uh, one of the uh, programs that we have is called the Civic, uh, um, Civic Innovation Fellowship and Lab. And through this, uh, our Civic Innovation Fellows are CUNY students. Um, we get a small cohort every single year. Uh, we introduce them into a boot camp around open data. We teach them how to become civic data analysts and work on projects called radars. Um, and in this framework, we give uh, CUNY students um, a career pathway to become our peers. We think it's really important at this time in our work that we build a pipeline so that way we're always building a framework to include more people to become civic data analysts. And that career pipeline helps us perform the rest of our organization. And so through our uh, fellows, we're able to perform uh, research and we're able to build tools. Um, and so uh, one of our apprentices, Gabby, happens to be joining with us. Z, who's also uh, here with us, they do our research and they help build our tools. Um, we essentially look at ways to help alleviate the pressure points within New York City open data. Um, so we help make data more useful. Um, and then how we get those tools out into your hands and how um, people learn about how to make data even more useful in their world work uh, is through public engagement. Um, so we host a bunch of events, um, which this is hopefully the beginning of a new series um, around uh, open data AMAs. Next slide. And uh, our work is really focused around four core freedoms, the freedom to connect, the freedom to learn, the freedom to innovate, and the freedom to collaborate. Um, so this is a bit of an experiment uh, for us. Next slide. So we want to be able to use these events to uh, help you understand uh, how to make uh, open data more useful. Um, we're trying to make this a very constructive and collaborative environment. 
Um, not only do we want data to be useful to you, we want to make sure that these events are useful to you. Um, so um, at the core of the work that we do um, is called the, um, at the core of the work that uh, we have been working on um, is this document called the People's Roadmap to a Digital New York City. Uh, it enshrines our values, which I just spoke of, the freedom, the four freedoms, um, as well as a number of different policy uh, and program opportunities, which uh, we have been working on for the diligently for the, the last uh, seven years. Uh, many of those pieces from the People's Roadmap um, actually have gone in to support the open data program and have given the foundation um, to give Zachary the, the, the tools and the resources that he and his colleagues uh, desperately needed to ensure that New York City has the best open data program in the United States, if not the world. Um, and so um, if you're wondering where we've been coming from and where we are working toward, I encourage you to read the People's Roadmap to a Digital New York City um, and uh, realize um, that the opportunities that we have are, are plentiful, even in this um, seemingly uh, dark times. Um, we are here working together to figure out how to improve um, our collective opportunity. Um, and with that, I wanna hand the microphone off to Zachary uh, to talk about the Mayor's Office of Data Analytics. Um, and all the great work that they do at the mayor's office uh, for open data. Thanks, Noel. Um, for, first, I wanna just thank you and, and everyone else at Beta NYC for having me um, and, and convening this event. And then all of the people who joined to, um, for, for joining to, to, to learn more and to engage about what I think is a really exciting topic. Um, so again, I'm, I'm Zachary Feeder. I am the Open Data Program Manager at the Mayor's Office of Data Analytics. And actually, just to give a bit of my background, before um, I was at the Mayor's Office of Data Analytics, I spent, uh, I think, of, yeah, about 11 years at the city's Parks Department, um, working in an operations role, working in a communications role, and then helping to set up the Parks Department's Open Data Program. Um, so, and then with that, I was really excited to the move over to the Mayor's Office of Data Analytics. You can find out more about us at nyc.gov slash analytics um, to, to help with the, the open data program at large. Uh, next slide, Kate. So a bit more about us at, at the Mayor's Office of Data Analytics or, or MODA. Um, we sort of have these, these three different things that we focus on. One is helping city agencies apply strategic analytical thinking. So we, we kind of act as um, almost internal consultants for these different city agencies. So some agencies have data scientists have work that they're doing um, on analytics themselves. It's quite advanced. Others, especially smaller agencies may not. And we can help to help share best practices, but also to bolster the efforts of these different agencies around the city. Uh, the second thing is, is looking to deliver services more equitably and effectively. One of the ways that we do that is actually through open data. Um, and by having all of this information available between city agencies, of course, available to the public, there is um, this third piece with more transparency. And, and the, the idea behind this, a lot of the thinking um, around the, the spirit of open data is that by having this information available, there's more transparency and with that more equity and more efficiency in how things are being being um, delivered and, and how the city is working. If you want to learn more um, about our project specifically, and you'll find a link to this on our website as well, but you can go to the short link for the Moda project gallery. We are a team um, on the, the projects we work on. We work primarily using open data ourselves. So we are not only um, the, the some of the people who help to, to maintain and, and, and oversee open data, but also um, some of its most enthusiastic users. So you can see some projects here on the screen. You can see some more at this um, data analytics, open analytics library, and, and see some of the data sources that we've used for our past projects, many of which are on, again, on open data. Um, next slide. So a little bit more about, about open data and how it's structured in New York. Um, I, again, I'm at the Mayor's Office of Data Analytics, but we're very fortunate to have a partner in this endeavor. We work really closely with the city's technology department, um, known as DOIT, 
and essentially um, they they work on a lot of the the infrastructure pieces and and technology pieces of open data. But we, we work very closely with them on, on really every aspect of of this open data system. Um, and, and one thing to note that even though we are the the, the people who are managing this program, the, none of this would be possible without the work of different city agencies and and people from those agencies who have deep expertise in, in using these data sets. So we actually have a system that's a bit more of like a distributed model where we may be publishing the data, we may be in some cases answering questions and I'm answering some of your questions today, but we are not the experts on all of the data from different city agencies. Um, with this, this network of, of people that we have, we're called open data coordinators, um, one for each agency, they actually, in many cases, not the experts themselves, but understand the agency's dynamics well enough that they can um, figure out what the answers are, ask questions, figure out what the best structure is and the best way to communicate information about these different data sets. So it really is a team effort within the city. And then we're, we're fortunate enough to have um, partners outside of the city like Beta NYC and, and like the many people who, who come to these events um, to, to also help to, to continue open data, open data's growth. Next slide. Um, so this is a, a photo of, um, I guess, before COVID of, of Union Square. And you can see for in this photo, an example of, of what you'd find on open data right now. We actually just crossed our, our 3000th data set um, on open data. And it's either, if, for anyone who has not been very familiar with it, who hasn't spent a lot of time on the OCD's open data site, there's a whole variety of data across these different departments. Um, everything from information about buildings to, as you can see here, recycling bins, street paving, parking tickets. For really every aspect of city government, uh, there, there is a, a, an equivalent data set that, that is presented on open data about that. And um, the, one of the questions that we receive is, well, is this particular data set um, or why isn't this particular data set open data? And, and sometimes it's genuinely because city government is not involved in that particular particular thing. Um, but again, if you want to take a look and, and see these data sets and many more, if you go to the city's open data site, you can see that. This is just really having these, these data sets represented in a different way as, as if you were walking down uh, this, the, the street and, and these are the sort of things you would see and then be able to find them also on open data. Next slide. So one of the things that, that is really powerful about open data is you're taking information and making it use, usable and, and useful for anyone, for any purpose. And a lot of times the, the things that are created um, by members of the public are way beyond what, what we had imagined when we originally created a data set. Again, all the data sets on open data are created by government for a specific purpose related to their mission. So if an agency is in charge of Department of Buildings, they would create data sets around buildings for their internal use and they're sharing those with the public. But a lot of times the, the products that we find that people have created about these data sets are, are, are really quite unique. And there's just some examples of, um, of data sets and, and, and projects that were created with different data sets. And if, if you go to the site, again, you can see the URL at the top, we have this project gallery where you can see what others have done with open data and get some inspiration. But we also encourage um, anyone who has done a project with open data wants to share a map that they created, a tool they put together to, to send it our way. And um, we'd be happy to take a look and, and to consider posting it um, as an example to others. Next slide. If you have a question about open data, if you notice a mistake in open data, if there's a data set that you're looking for that you can't find or that you think should exist that you don't see, you can go to this address at the top. It's also at the top of the open data page. Um, there's a button, contact us, and you can send the, a note to not only the open data team, so to, to me, to others at the mayor's office of data analytics and, and the Department of Information Technology and Telecommunications, but also to these individual open data coordinators. So within um, this form, there are there's a whole big drop down menu of different city agencies and you can send your request to them and get an answer from a person who knows about this data set, whether it's again, um, when it will be posted or we're fixing an error or explaining uh, some nuance of it. Next slide. 
And then lastly, um, we, we produced an annual report about open data. Um, this is the, the report we, we actually released um, not that long ago, back in September. And with, with that, one of the things that we've been, been thinking about um, and one of the really cool opportunities from an event like this is that open data is one of the ways that New Yorkers can, can connect with each other. It's, it's a common um, repository of, of knowledge, of information about our city. And I know Noel was mentioning this uh, as part of ex just explaining what Beta NYC's mission is, but, but ours as well is to take this information and to figure out how to get as much of it um, as easy to understand as possible to as many people as possible. And um, really the, with, with different areas of knowledge, different people have different passions and understanding how your interests can relate to someone else's, understanding your community better, uh, there's a lot of opportunity in, in how you use open data. If you want to take a look and, and see some of the data sets we publish, see some of the stories about how people have used open data, you can visit this link and read more of the report. I will warn you that it is a very, very long PDF that this link goes to, um, but the first like 30 or 40 pages are all narrative and, and, and photos and the rest of it is, is actual just report. Um, one of the things that I'm excited about from this year's report is, um, well, actually two things. One is that the year prior, we had a, a co, um, creation session to figure out now that we've had open data for 10 years, what the future of open data might look like. So we have an update on um, progress on, on that future vision um, across these, these three kind of broad areas, one around um, making open data more usable, around improving the city resources, and around um, sort of similar to this theme, connecting people to each other and building communities around open data. Um, so we have an update on, on that vision and, and progress that we've made in the first year. The second thing is um, we've continued over time to, thanks to the recommendation, Noel, um, we've continued over time to, to look at more ways to find new data sets. So we started open data, a few different iterations of it, but the current one I would say started about 10 years ago, it started in 2009. And the first few years were there was a lot of data sets that we didn't have published and the preponderance of data was all was yet to be published. Now we are almost at the opposite point where the and a large portion of the city's data is right now on the city open data site, or at least of the city's data that is able to be published on open data has already been published. So we're continuing to look for different ways to identify where new open data data sets might exist. And one of the things that we did this past year was ask city agencies and these open data coordinated city agencies to look at their public websites and see what data is presented there, whether it's like a table or it's some sort of tool or some sort of dashboard or map, um, and, and to give an inventory of those data sets on their website and to indicate whether or not those same data sets were also on open data as another way of, of seeing, of making sure that we have the information that should be public uh, actually published on open data. And um, we actually ended up doubling from the previous year the number of data sets that were that were scheduled to be published this year, which I think is a pretty um, a pretty nice outcome of, of that. And we're going to continue to, um, to to look at other ways to identify where data might exist, where the people are using it, people were requesting it, but we haven't published it yet, and understanding what we can do to make that, that information public. And I think with that, um, ready to start answering questions. Cool, uh, thanks for that. That was uh, a nice intro to open data. Um, and I just, I had this under my desk. This is from last year. Um, this is the next decade of open data. Um, and one thing I like is how, I don't know if you can see my screen cause I'm sharing, but um, this sort of like cycle of impact of all the different ways you can use um, all the different sort of touch points of, of data and uh, what goes on there. So there's there's a lot that needs to be done um, with data uh, for us to like fully advance. Um, and we're getting there and it's exciting. Um, and yeah, and so, um, so now um, is question time. And uh, I know some people have already asked questions um, and we have them lined up to answer. Um, and if you've not asked questions or you're curious what other people have asked and you would like to vote up and down, uh, not down, just up uh, other people's questions, um, you may, and I'm putting the link in the chat room right now. Um, it's also up here on the screen. Um, so you should 
easily be able to just type in a question and answer it um, or uh, add your thumbs up to another question. Um, and this is the first time we're using this tool. So Slido gave us a um, sort of uh, promo account for being a nonprofit and um, we're trying it out and uh, we're excited to see how it goes. Um, so shout out to and thanks to uh, Slido for partnering with us on this. Um, we're, the questions that you submit will be just sort of filtering up and down. And um, I know that Zachary has access on the back end to go through them as well. So um, should we start, start with the first one, Zachary? Sure. Uh, so yeah, so. Is I'll ask the questions. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Who's responsible for publishing open data? <laughs> so I see people are voting on the questions as you're asking them. So I'll try to not be distracted by that. Um, okay. So the city, city agencies are responsible for publishing open data. In New York City, um, and this is not the case in every city or every jurisdiction, there's actually, I think Noel mentioned this, um, thanks to the efforts of our, our advocates and elected officials, um, the, there's a law about open data. So it, it's not an option, it's a requirement. Um, it, it's something that lives in perpetuity. It, it's not a matter of, of a policy of a certain administration. Um, and, and responsible, there, there is actually a whole series of, of specific guidelines around publishing open data that both the law um, includes, but we also have more guidance that we share with city agencies and city staff. Essentially, anything under this definition of open data, um, and that it's not containing people's personal and private information that would not compromise some kind of contract. Um, there's other exceptions you can see in the law that's all publicly available is required to be published or required to be prioritized for publication. And um, with that, there is actually a data set, um, and I can try to send a link to it in the chat, of, of what is about to be published or what is upcoming. Um, but it's essentially, it's city agencies and city staff. And as I mentioned before, there's this network of open data coordinators who have some expertise in, in data and in their agencies and can help to go to the different departments within their agencies. Um, one thing that you may not know is that the city employs um, more than 300,000 people to keep it running, uh, which is pretty remarkable. It, it's um, if you're looking at like the city's open, the, the city staff versus the country's population, it's like one of every 1,000 people in the US are employed to, to keep New York City running. Um, and, and it's a really a combination of a whole lot of those people to, to make data available. Um, everything from making sure the documentation is written clearly to the data is structured properly to setting up like pipelines to get it from one place and one server to another. That's my it's kind of long-winded answer on who's responsible, but I could talk about that for a while. So happy to answer other questions there. Cool, awesome. Um, how many open data sets are there? So uh, we, we just we just crossed 3,000. Um, I've been saying more than 2,000, and I said almost 3,000, and now we're actually slightly over 3,000. I will say that um, we, we, we talk about the number of data sets we have, but I, I would not look at that necessarily as like a, a mark of, of quality or of, uh, there's no like number that we want to get to. We, we want to have more data available, but we also are really focused and, and continue to focus more and more on making sure that the data we have available is really usable because ultimately if people are not using it, then there's no point in making it public. That makes sense. Um, does every New York City agency have open data? Um, most of them do, nearly all of them do. And to make sure that they are looking for their data and, and trying to um, find as much as they can. And I, was, I, I think I alluded to this before when I was talking about our report, we do have a process that every agency goes through each year to determine whether or not they have open data. And um, that, that's really just looking at the different data sets and systems that exist within those agencies and evaluating them to see if they can be published. And this is oftentimes is a process that involves people with expertise in data, but also um, the agency's legal staff to understand the interpretation of the law and how it applies to their data in particular. But there are some agencies, um, and I think actually ours is a good example, the Mayor's Office of Data Analytics, we use other people's data. We don't really generate much data of our own. Um, up until just recently, the only data set that we had was the data set of open data coordinators. Um, which is a, a bit of a nice self-referential. 
um, example there. But there's, there's, there are quite a few, especially smaller agencies that don't have much data um, or, or just don't deal with as much data, um, certainly public data as, as some of the, the larger ones. Uh, what's the best way to get help with open data or report issues with it? Uh, if you go to the open data website, uh, nyc.gov slash open data, you'll find a button at the top of that page um, that says contact us. If you click on that, there's an option to get help, to report issues. Um, you can, yeah, you, you can you can do all those things. I think that was actually the link that I had before and I, I showed a little bit of, of what that screen looks like, but it, it should be a pretty straightforward form. And again, um, either we can answer your question um, if it's a general question about open data, but if it's a specific question, we'll send it to one of the city agencies that's responsible for that data. And then their staff who have more expertise in it would, would be able to respond. Um, do you know whether or not other US cities have open data and how does New York City compare in terms of the number of open data sets uh, that are released? So there, there, there are definitely, um, I'll answer the first question first. Uh, yes, other cities have open data. As I mentioned before, some of them have it as a matter of, of administration policy. Some of them have it as a matter of law. And the extent to which they have data, the, the different data sets they have also varies. Sometimes um, there, there are certain types of data that are require some sort of payment. Um, we, we don't have that for, for us. All the open data is entirely open. And how do they compare to the number of open data sets? Um, again, I would say the number is not the only metric to judge by. As, as the most populous city, we have, I think, by far the most, as, as far as I know. Um, but the, the, a lot of it depends on how data is structured and, and what, um, what data sets are paired with other data sets. Um, yeah, I've heard, I've heard people look to us, I think to New York City a lot um, and applaud their data efforts. So good job. Um, how can we quickly and accurately get data on COVID block by block, month by month uh, and which Manhattan neighborhoods? So if you're looking for COVID data, there is some data on the city's open data site. We are working with the city's health department to continue publish more data and to improve the data that we have. But I would say, um, certainly I'm, I'm not an expert on the city's COVID data in particular, um, but if you go to the, the city's health departments, if you're looking for data about COVID in New York City in particular, which it sounds like block by block in Manhattan, um, different neighborhoods you probably are, you would, you would want to go to the, the city's health department site. They have a whole page, actually it's the first button on their site about COVID and with that they have a whole section of data. Um, they have a GitHub repository if you want to see the raw data. Um, so it actually has the tables and um, the, the tables that, that are responsible for making all the information um, that they share available. And they also have a series of dashboards and charts of, of open data um, that they publish as well. Uh, no, you were just gonna add, yeah. Yeah, um, so this is something that many New Yorkers want, uh, a tighter geography than the, the zip code. Um, the, one of the problems that we have is that at the national level, uh, COVID data is tied to zip code. And so sadly, zip code is really not a really good, useful like geography inside of a, a place like New York City. Um, but sadly, that's kind of where the data and how the data is being organized. Um, so if you want the data at a more granular level, we literally have to lobby for that data. And because we are in the middle of this crisis and that data is being used on a daily basis uh, to manage exactly the type of response, it is unlikely that we will see that data change beyond zip code. It'll probably be released once we're like past these multiple waves and you know mass mass uh, um, vaccine delivery. Uh, and there may be an opportunity to change it in the future. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, due to privacy reasons, due to um, just the way the operational reasons, uh, we won't see that data in zip code. And we have tried. Um, so. Um, which is another reason why uh, we need you to be armed uh, to be data advocates. But thanks for asking a good question. Um, Zachary, are personal names or information uh, included in any open data sets? 
Um, this is actually a great question. I, I don't know if the I guess based on age, but to have next to the, the COVID data question, because as Noel said, um, one of the, the considerations for any data set, but especially health data, is, is not including people's personal um, personal information. And um, in first of all, um, the city does have a chief privacy officer and a data privacy office, and we work with them really closely. And with that, actually, every agency has an agency privacy officer. And that person sometimes is the same person who's responsible for open data. Many times it's not. And um, the general procedure is that those two people will, will work in tandem to figure out what elements of a data set should be published. Um, in many cases, this means actually reviewing column by column uh, the different elements of the data set and looking at the rows of data to understand what can be published and what can't be based on how the data has been filled out. Um, as a general rule, we don't publish private um, information, including names. There are some data sets that have that for, for, for that have that. Um, so for example, data sets about city employees, um, just knowing that somebody is employed in a certain title or, or what their salary is, that's public information already. And that information is all available on New York City Open Data. But as a general, the, the, the rule overall is that we, we, we try to avoid publishing unless there's a good reason, um, any kind of private information. It's something we're very careful about and, and certainly um, would, would encourage anyone who, who does see anything to, to let us know and, and we, would, we would quickly look to um, address it. Yeah, yeah, I know with um, housing with like real estate as well, there's uh, maybe like building owners might be have their names published in uh, the, the data sets. Um, but uh, I know we often get that question in classes where we're teaching uh, 311 data um, and no, uh, that your 311 data, your complaints are anonymized. Uh, so people do not know it's you. Um, doesn't mean they can't figure out it's not you, but uh, uh, all right, next question. Uh, where does the city stand with its open data plans as outlined in last year's next decade of open data report? Um, so I think I would refer you to this year's next decade of open data report um, for, for that answer. We, we, we go through in, in pretty um, basically item by item uh, of an update on, on each of the, the bullets that we had there. Um, there are, are 27 of them, so I'm not going to attempt to talk through all of them now. One of the ones that I mentioned before um, was around finding more ways to, to get data. And, and this is what I was describing earlier of, of looking at different city agency websites is an example of how we've moved forward there. Um, we are currently in the process of uh, revamping the way we handle inquiries um, into that help desk we were talking about earlier. Um, that's another example. We have looked at a few different um, data quality improvement measures. So we are continuing to move forward um, with, with the different initiatives that we had committed to in, in that report. Um, I, I will say that it, because it is the next decade, there are some that are much longer term and there are some that we probably will be finishing um, quite soon. So I'm happy to, I don't know if the person who asked this is in the chat, but I'm happy to, to address more of like a specific initiative or, or to talk further um, there. Cool. Um... Is, this is an interesting uh, question. Uh, is New York City considering creating a federated data exchange where each agency has its own agency portal? Uh, WC, what is? I'm not sure what, what WC, which is, or anyway. Uh, which? Which what? It uh, stands for which, sorry. Which, oh, okay. Um, I was like, there's an acronym of short, Short text, I don't know. Uh, its own agency portal, which is used for interagency exchange, not just open data. Um, th th there's, this is also one where there's probably a, a short answer and a long answer. I'll, I'll start with the short one. Um, that there, there are already mechanisms um, for interagency data sharing and, and exchange just within the city. Um, so agency to agency without going to, to the outside on the internet. Um, the, the other piece of that is that actually one of the most common ways, um, this is in part anecdotally, that agencies share data with each other it is through open data. Um, it, it's really easy to, and there's no agreements, there's there's documentation that's already there on the open data portal. So a lot of agencies do, do use open data for interagency exchange. Um, and then as far as like 
having its own, each agency having its own data portal. That's definitely something we've talked about. And I don't know if, if Joel, if this was your question. Um, I think it was something especially we talked about during that, that planning and, and co-creation session, talking about the next decade of open data. One of the things, and this is getting kind of far into nuances here, is that some agencies actually have more ability to publish um, or, or to upload their own data and have more control and, and more like curatorship essentially of, of their data. And that's the thing we're looking to grow. Um, so more agencies are able to more easily publish um, or at least like upload their own data um, and, and something we would continue to help them with, but, but that's something we're, we're continuing to, to examine. Um, what's the difference between open data and uh, enterprise data? Um, so I think there, there's, there's certainly a bunch of different definitional questions here. Um, I'll give my answer. I'm sure um, others may have slightly different ones. Uh, open data is typically thought of as, as government data, not always. There, there are certain examples of, of data um, outside of, of government that, that would qualify as, as open data as well, but essentially it's data that is shared with the public for any, um, w w generally without any kind of restriction for any kind of use. So um, one of the, the questions that we get frequently is, well, do I have a, do I need to get a license to use this or can I make money using this? And like, you can do whatever you want with our data. The, the, the idea is it's open for anyone for any purpose. Enterprise data, um, I think we refer to a few different things. It, often it's just um, data that is one, like it's large, there's just a lot of it. And, and two, um, it is data that is um, central to a, a particular mission of, of, a, of an organization, um, central to the enterprise. So that sometimes they're the same, um, sometimes they're not. So there's a whole, um, whole lot of definitions there, but, but that's, um, that's mine. Um, yeah. Uh, so do you ever encounter pushback about making data available? I'd love to find a way to introduce similar uh, to where I'm now living, but where opaqueness is king. I, I like the, the phrase of opaqueness is king. Um, that's a, a good way of putting it. I'm actually going to take this one and the biggest challenge. Um, I'm going to try to match these together because I think this is actually the biggest challenge around, around getting the platform set up and around open data. Is, is really there, there is a, a substantial change in how people have to think about their jobs and, and how they manage the data that they have. And, and you take a, a city of, of um, any large organization where people were, were using data and it was made public in, in dribs and drabs um, through, through different requests um, and make the default that everything is public. Um, and in many cases, the, and more and more cases now, at least it's something we've been pushing for, um, and, and working toward the data is automatically updated. So on, on a certain basis, you don't actually, you, you, you have some review of it, but you're not actually like proactively sending it out. It just gets released every whatever frequency. Um, so that is the, the convincing people and, and just making people understand what that means is, is it's been and continues to be an ongoing conversation. And I think depending on um, the person you're talking to and their understanding of open data, their understanding of data, their understanding of the law, um, that, that can be a, a, an interesting conversation. Um, I think more and more as, as cultures change and as people, this becomes the default, it, it's something that's easier. Um, I, I think the, a few things that, that I've, I've found particularly helpful, one, the, the idea of this, this information being useful internally um, it can, can be a, a good reason for, for creating documentation around it, for making it um, available, and um, another impetus for, for just cleaning it up. Two, having the, the data set, have, having the uses. So the way we have a project gallery, one of the reasons for that where we want to highlight public uses of data is to show people that it's actually for a purpose. It's not just effort for effort's sake. Um, there, there are people, there's communities of people like, like all of you, hopefully, who, who are interested in the data, who, who will use the data and who will benefit from the data. And ultimately the city will benefit from the data. The city staff will benefit, everyone who lives in the city will benefit. Um, but I think again, that, that, that kind of culture shift where you have this, this sudden transparency that has never really been at this level before is, um, it can, can be surprising for some people. 
Um, all right, this is a new question. Um, apart from the Scout Discovery tool for the open source track, are you also exploring open source options for the open data platform itself? So we're continuing um, and we're always interested in looking at ways we can um, expand the, the scope of what's on open data and also the ability of, of not only, of the ability one of, of us to build on it and make the data easier to use but the ability of people to build in as well. So I think that the tool for those who don't know that was referenced here um, was created by a group called Data Clinic. Um, you can read a little bit more about it in the report um, that I referenced earlier. And it, it makes it easy, um, easier to find different data sets and connect them together. And they're continuing to work on this tool. And, and one of the, the cool things about it is it's all, all open source and it's built using the open um, APIs that allow you to essentially pull from what's on open data to another program. Um, but we're, we're, we're continuing to look at ways we can make open data more open is, is the short answer there. Uh, how do you prioritize incoming data sets? What is your curation process? Uh, and do you offer internships? Okay, I'm going to take the last one first. So I think that's a little <laughs> bit different from the first two. Um, we, th th there are internships both in our office. So we have um, actually right now, we have um, two, it's, not, it's actually not an internship. Um, we have a, a City Service Corps member um, as part of NYC Service. If you look at NYC Services site, which is the city's um, service focused organization, you can find more information about that program. Um, we also have an urban fellow in our office um, as well right now. And over the summer, we do um, generally in our office in particular have interns um, and I would say City agencies broadly, including our partners at Do It, tend to have interns um, as well. And um, thank you, Z, for the links. Um, but yes, we, we definitely do. I would, I would just say to keep an eye if there's a particular agency you're interested in. Um, there's a mayor's office internship program, which I, I believe was paused this past summer for due to COVID. But um, that, that definitely, there are internships around the city in, in these fields and, and related ones as well. The prioritization um, question there, th this is a, a good one. Um, one, of the, 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 one of the considerations here is there's actually in the law when open data was, was formally codified, there are prioritization considerations to take in mind. Um, and and there, there's a question of public interest. There's a question of how the data could be used to um, reducing inequality, there's a question of how it could be used to generate economic activity. Um, and all of these are, or I think some of these um, are, are codified in the law explicitly. And um, with that, you can see, you, you, you can see that, um, but otherwise for the, the incoming data sets, um, the prioritization, one, we look at what people are submitting. So there is on the open data site through that same contact us page, you can request a data set. And we actually have a data set of those requests um, where agencies can respond to requests that were made and to indicate um, if the data is available and if so, when it will be published. So a lot of it is we try to be demand driven here um, and, and publish data that people are interested in. Um, other, other times it, it's based on how difficult it is to publish the data set. So there are some data sets, for example, where you're taking data from a mainframe that was set up decades ago and the documentation is perhaps in someone's head or perhaps with someone who has since left that agency. So there, there really is definitely a question of difficulty on prioritization um, or, or just in, as far as timing, not that it's less important, but just that it will take longer to do. And then for curation process, um, we I think there's a few different ways you could you could look at this. Um, we, we try to to look at data um, and, and 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 make sure that is both machine readable in that you can take it and look at it and use it for a program, but also human readable in that someone can understand it and um, and make use of it. So we, we we try to make sure that both of those criteria are satisfied. Um, Great. Um, the, the next question somebody uh, sent in and it was a bit longer, so I had to shorten it, but um, how do I get updates to data sets that are on New York City open data and ideally establish contact with a person responsible so end users uh, have someone to follow up with? And I believe it was in reference to a 
they have been using an old data set and they would like to uh, see these new data sets and um, know what the updates are. So number one, um, there is an update frequency that is listed for each data set. Um, when you go to the data set, you should see this data set is updated on a daily basis, a quarterly basis, a monthly basis, an annual basis. It's updated as it's as information becomes available. Excuse me. Um, and and that, that's the first thing. So that you should be able to see when it, when it should have been updated. You also should be able to see when it actually was updated. Sometimes there's a difference there. As I mentioned before, we we're trying to automate as many of those updates as, as we can um, and continuing to, to work. Um, our, our colleagues that do it especially are continuing to work on that process and, and, and to have more data sets that are automatically updated. So this won't be a question that we, we get anymore. But sometimes um, there is a person who's responsible for updating it, and that could even mean like emailing a file over. And um, with that process, the, it, it doesn't always happen. So if there's a data set that you see that is out of date, um, again, if, if, you, if you get in touch with us and um, what we can take a look and, and see, sometimes um, it's actually out of date. Sometimes there's an error in the way the update frequency is communicated. Um, depending on the data set that the the, the answer will be slightly different, but I think in general, if, if you want, if you have a question, if you want to follow up with the person responsible for the data set, if you see a data set that's out of date or something that's confusing, click on the contact us page and we'll do the best to get back to you. And again, we're looking to, we're looking to improve that process as well. Um, so keep an eye on there um, and, and you should see some, some improvements and, and, and more, a user, more user friendly interface there as well. Good questions. Um, this is a very specific question, um, and I'm not sure which borough uh, they're talking about. Um, but current, what is the current percentage of homeless to place residents in Community Board Nine? Um, not sure this is totally relevant, but uh, do you want to point them in a direction? Uh, I'm also not sure that that's a data set, um, but so I think a couple of things here. There is an annual. Um, count that is done by the city's department of homeless services um, it's called the hope count it's actually done um, not that far away i think it's in the early winter generally um, and you can find more information on the department of homeless services site and those results are released i don't know if they're by community board um, but you can also see the um i think they're, they, they do make data available on um, homeless shelter populations. I believe those are by community board. But I think again, the, the, at a high level, um, this goes across um, uh, across different, different data sets. One is you can actually navigate New York City open data by agency. Um, so that would be the place to start looking at the data that homeless services makes available. Um, I'll try to drop a link to that if Z is not faster than me um, yeah. below. And I, uh, I know Z has also um, participated in that count. Um, so Z, if you have any insight uh, that you want to share, come on on and, and share. Yeah, so, so the, the hope count is probably the most accurate count we're ever going to get since it counts outside of the shelters. So the folks on the street that don't want to go to shelters, uh, I just want to echo that point. Um, there is a data set on individual census per community district. Um, and by type of facility. So this data set might be interesting to you, but it's uh, per month. So it's, um, it's by month. So it might not be as granular as, as day by day um, of the people who are in shelters. Awesome, thanks. Um, and then and just Z quickly. Also, oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say Z is also a beta NYC. Um, just a quick intro. And I was just gonna say the last piece here is just um, if you, don't find the data you're looking for. If there's a specific cut of it that you want, um, we may not have it. But if we do, um, if, if you send us a message, we can we can take a look at and connect you with the homeless services staff. Yeah, and maybe we'll answer this one next. Then, uh, what are uh, what about uh, FOIA requests? Why not publish them as well? So there is actually a complementary open records portal, and you can find um, many, but not all FOIA requests here. Um, and actually getting to the, the second question about amendments to open data law. One of the things that we do look for each year as part of our annual process for discovering new data sets is what data was released via FOIL or FOIA. If you're not familiar, it's Freedom of Information Law or Freedom of Information Act. And the idea is that 
similar to open data, you're taking records um, in many cases or data that the government has and, um, and we're releasing them. So we look at um, those releases and if we see that there's a, basically all of the different data sets that were used to answer those releases or, or to field those, those, those questions. And similar to agency websites, ask each agency to indicate whether or not the data was, or the data set is currently available on open data. And if not, they are required to explain why it can't be made available or to um, prioritize it and give it a date when it will be available. And that would be in that data set that I shared before um, of, of, of the data release tracker. So we, it is something that we, we look at really closely as part of our, um, again, like annual data set discovery section and, and compliance with the open data law, which is actually now mandated as part of the open data law. Um, so I think to, to, to speak to that a little bit more broadly, as far as amendments, um, there have been a few since the open data um, program has started, there, there, there continue to, to be, and um, make it easier to publish open data outside. I think, again, um, we, we actually have one of the strongest um, mandates, uh, especially in law, of um, publishing that I've looked at every city's um, legal language and, and, and um, codes around open data. But we, we, we have a one of the reasons why we have so many data sets is really that unless there, there is a very narrow list of exemptions that the data set qualifies for, then the agency must make it available. All right, well, um, that brings us to 710, right on the dot. Um, uh, and we finished all the questions. Somehow that worked out really well. Um, so uh, thank you for uh, submitting your questions. Um, just quickly, um, uh, if anyone, well, I'll just, if anyone has any other questions, uh, now is your chance to come off the mic and ask. Um, no hardballs though. <laughs> um, otherwise, um, we are interested in hearing from you. Um, we have a question for you, which is, uh, you know, we would love to hold more sessions like this that um, just sort of are a way for people to ask questions and discuss and learn about open data. Um, and we're curious how you how you think it would be most useful uh, for us to organize these. Um, some thoughts have been, you know, should we invite people from different agencies to um, like the open data coordinators uh, to come and talk to us and help answer questions specifically around agencies and their data um, or are there specific themes or social issues uh, where we could invite other community organizations um, to talk about it with. Um, so if you have any thoughts, uh, you're welcome to come off of mute and uh, answer. Uh, I know yeah, can I have, uh, yeah, um, one thought is, I would imagine we're all thinking about the impact of COVID and maybe how to measure that. It's like not an immediately obvious thing, but maybe we can have suggestions from just lots of different perspectives and maybe we'll find some interesting ways of measuring that. Sure, yeah, um, like a COVID centric or public health uh, type of uh, session. All right, well, we're interested in hearing. So if you have thoughts, you can uh, email me um, or uh, I'm gonna throw my email in the, in the chat. Um, we'd love to hear from you. Um, and if anyone else does, feel free to come off mute as well. Um, I didn't update this, refresh this slide deck, but um, we like to always just hold at the end of sessions uh, a chance for people to share any announcements. Um, one announcement that we would like to share is that uh, we are going to be holding um, Open Data Week this year again uh, with the Mayor's Office of Data Analytics. Um, every year, uh, Beta NYC puts on a conference called School of Data, which normally brings people together in person um, and for a either introduction to Open Data Week or a sort of celebration at the end of the week. Um, this year, everything's gonna be virtual. Um, potentially uh, some things will be held on the street or something we'll, uh, we'll see, but uh, we will be putting our call uh, for proposals out soon. So um, 
we're working on that and it should be out at the end of the month or thereabouts. And uh, we look forward to sharing that with you and hearing great ideas that you have uh, for sessions, trainings, panels, workshops, all around open data. Um, so if you know of people uh, that should submit something, share it with them. Um, we're also holding an event um, and you can sign up to Beta NYC's um, communities and channels to stay in touch with us on our newsletter and um, in our Slack channel, Facebook, Twitter, um, and Meetup uh, is where we post our events. We're gonna be holding an event um, with uh, Airtable um, to talk about how communities have been organizing data they've been collecting in response to uh, COVID and situations they're finding themselves in where they need to aggregate uh, data in one place and organize it with other people. So um, look out for that event as well. That's gonna be on, uh, I believe, December 8th, December 8th, yeah. So we're gonna be posting that on Meetup soon. Um, I know there was a question someone had about how to, uh, in, in the breakout room, somebody was talking about organizing data um, and how to do that. Uh, so I was referring to that. Um, end of November, as in November 30th. Um, the call for proposals, yes, it will be thereabouts and it'll be in our newsletter, which goes out the first week of December. Um, so there's not a specific date, um, but November 30th, or I'm not even sure what day of the week November 30th is, uh, but yes, some there, time there around, sometime around then. Um, but uh, this is also a chance for you to share announcements. So if you have a job, uh, if you're hiring, if you're looking for a job, um, feel free to come off mute and uh, announce that now. We'd love to hear about events or anything that you all are talking about. And if not, no worries. All right. Um, Z, do you have anything uh, that you want to add about upcoming things or anything going on? Um, so yeah, if you have any like really specific data questions like this CB9 homeless um, question, um, we have a system for that. So it's called RADARS, uh, Research and Data Assistance Requests. So uh, we essentially act like um, a data analysis unit and help you answer your questions. So I'm gonna post a link on, on um, in the chat. And if you're interested, just uh, write your questions to us and we'll try our best to answer them. Yeah. Um, so, so thank you. Thanks, everyone. Uh, we're going to come off record now. Um, this was a fun uh, and insightful uh, open data community hour. And we're glad that you asked questions. They were at some of them were new to me. So that was really fun to hear the answers. Um, and I hope that everyone learned something. Um, Zachary, do you have any final words before we come off? Um, actually, on Open Data Week, one, when we have the launch, we will be posting on the Open Data site. So if you're looking at nyc.gov slash open data, we will probably have that feature pretty prominently there. Um, and two, I would also say, of course, um, sign up for Beta NYC's newsletter, but we will probably be sending an email to our mailing list as well when that is live. Um, so if you really want to make sure you don't miss it, um, you could you could sign up and also just look at our our website um, beyond that. But no, I just wanted to again um, thank Kate, you, and and everyone else from Beta for um, for hosting this and um, for everyone who was able to join. Yeah, um, so we're gonna thank you, thank you for joining us and answering all those questions. Um, <laughs> and there's a lot, uh, but it was nice. So I'm gonna stop the recording now. Um, goodbye, Internet. Um, we are going to be. Uh,